thank you dr neha kakar and sahani sir good evening good afternoon and good morning this is the 1387th day of continuous webinar conducted by international forum for promoting homeopathy we invite all of you to this stage and today our guest is dr suraj singh badoria let us begin the session with one minute silent prayer <laughs> Thank you all. As you all know, the International Forum for Promoting Homeopathy comprises of homeopathic lovers, students, and homeopathic doctors. And uh, we are conducting three sessions in a row. Uh, just we completed our Hindi session, that was a beautiful uh, session. And from uh, 8 to 9, we have the international session in English, and uh, from 9 to 10, a local language session in Malayalam. And today, our guest is none other than Dr. Suraj Singh Badoria. Uh, doctor has presented so many sessions in this uh, 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 webinar. All the sessions were extremely brilliant and he is a person who is doing a lot of research work and is publishing a lot of things in that way and he has presented every, <clears throat> almost all, all of his presentations were on research work. That is something, that is the beauty of Dr. Suri Singh because nowadays it is the time to raise up to the uh, level of the science uh, that homeopathy is is a scientific system, so we need proving evidence and everything. We need research purpose and researchers like Dr. Suri Singh Badodia, and he is doing excellent service to homeopathy by the way of making this kind of presentations. Uh, and let me introduce uh, Dr. here. He is uh, an assistant professor, Department of Homeopathy Pharmacy, Paul Institute of Homeopathy and Research, Paul University, Vadodara, Gujarat. Uh, some of his friends also joined us with uh, such sessions. All the, of his team are re really dedicated to homeopathy. And uh, uh, he has won many awards. He has presented uh, different subjects uh, in different uh, field. And he is having very good homeopathy practice also. He is doing uh, publishing research articles to uh, analyze absor absorbance capacity of cat a calendula lotion, so many research. Okay, I, I, if I start uh, uh, describing about all this thing, uh, we need at least uh, 10 to 15 minutes for that. So I am not uh, mentioning about anything, uh, all those things. You can watch all this thing in the poster we published. And he has written uh, some of the books also. He has uh, 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 undertook or uh, participated in different workshop uh, for the uh, betterment of his personality as well as for the purpose of uh, procuring knowledge in uh, homeopathy. So such a person, he is a uh, uh, person and today the topic of the day is uh, in vitro study. As you all know that uh, this is a very important thing that is uh, how these things is done, how, uh, what is the purpose of these things and how it is it can be utilized by all of us for the uh, for bringing homeopathy to the top of the world. So let us welcome Dr. Suresh Singh Bhadhuria. Welcome, Doctor. First of all, I am very thankful to this platform. It is not uh, just a platform. It is uh, just a beginning of our, uh, what we can say, uh, upbringing and our knowledge. So I'm going to share my screen. Is it visible, sir? Uh, not a chair. You please. I mean, uh, yes, yes, it is coming. Now it is visible to all, sir? Yes, 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 it is coming. Okay. So uh, before starting this topic, uh, first we have to understand uh, why the homeopathy is not uh, like, like uh, EBM, that is evidence-based medicine now. We have so many sources, we have so many medicines, we have 
have so many remedies a different kingdom classification but still we are not on the scientific background we always uh, talk about uh, the philosophy we always talk about uh, some few elements so homeopathy needs some scientific explanation because ultimately we are on the track of dynamic system we are on the track of this uh, uh, what we can say the potentization uh, the principle of this dynamization so ultimately when we talk about the any pharmacological action of any medicine any drug so it is very very uh, important to explore and to justify their action on the human or the any living entity on some scientific explanation when we talk about symptomatology suppose in last session we had uh, this uh, discussion related to the medicine on uh, the renal calculi the stones so what are the scientific background uh, there are so many medicines so we have to justify this that is very very important part so today our topic is in vitro study in vitro means in situ so it is one of the step moving towards the new drug development or to prove the efficacy of any drug substances or medicine on, on the living organism so in vitro what is in vitro so in next slide now see in vitro it means in situ in the glass so in vitro is the part of pharmacy or the new drug development it is pre clinical trial not clinical one so this study is in situ inside the glass not outside one so they are generally performed with the various microorganism cells biological molecules which are outside their normal biological context so generally when we talk about this in vitro study so it is related with all this type of unicellular or multicellular organism from outside their normal biological context it means suppose if you want to study on the particular cell or tissue or particular part of the body so that part should be cultivated or grown outside the living entity so it is in situ it is not within the body of that particular organism when it is involving the whole body then it is said to be the in vivo study or in vivo so that is the very basic difference between in vitro and in vivo study so this is in vitro so generally this type of test done or it occurs inside the test tube it has a major role for study the biology and its various discipline under the traditional one so it is just like when we take a test tube plus petri dish micro pipettes so generally under such structures which are generally used in our laboratory purpose or any type of analytical procedure when we cultivate that particular cell or that particular tissue or that particular microbe under such structures so they are said to be a in vitro study got it my point so generally these are said to be the in by in vitro in situ inside the glass inside the test tube in figure you can see now this is a one cell through which you can going to study their microscopic view 
what are the structures how this structure arrange so this is in general study of cell this is very very important to know because afterward when we talk about new drug development so any drug discovery any medicinal product should be analyzed under this, this type of experimentation so that we can conclude that x drug or medicine have a int on that particular cell so it is very very important part next what are the examples generally the examples in in vitro studies are isolation growth identification of cells from multicellular organism these are generally the steps through which we are going to study the in vitro so first you are going to isolate them then we have to grow their colonies their groups then we have to identify this cells from the multicellular organism like mitochondria ribosomes and some other cellular events or some other structures which are present in our unicellular or the multicellular organisms when these structures were grown then they are to be detect or categorize under a different headings so these are the in general examples how we cultivate how we develop these colonies so generally it involves with uh, the organelle or some other cellular events or the bacteria or the cell of any microbe so these are in general examples suppose if you want to study the efficacy of x drug on the virus so you can also have the dna or rna or the proteinaceous structure of that particular virus through which you can study either our medicine is going to broken down or having the catalytic activity on that particular proteinaceous structure which are taken from that particular virus so generally these are a various examples so this examples shows the effect of any medicine any drug substance on that particular cell so this is very very important part to know how we will proceed to the in vitro study okay so it involves with multiple organisms multiple cell organelle multiple microbes multiple viruses multiple microorganism you can have any type of cell you can develop and uh, have the cultivation of and the growth of that particular cell then you can go for the trial or the uh, what we can say the efficacy of your medicine on, on that particular plate so these are the in general examples so it depends on the physician it depends on the researcher which type of cell is going to be included in your research work so it is very very important part generally this polymerase chain reaction it is general a uh, selective method or the what we can say the replication of the specific dna and rna sequences in the test tube so what happen when we go for this type of in vitro studies so generally uh, there are lot of reactions seen inside the cellular or the tissue structures one of the reaction is polymerase chain reaction this polymerase chain reaction it is generally related with the replication of the dna and the rna sequences because when we talk about the living entity either it is unicellular or multicellular so when it undergoes into the division so there is a division of this dna and rna strain so when they goes under the replication so there is a changes and there is a increase in the number of cellular and the tissue events so this is the polymerase chain reaction it is very commonly seen in the bacterial study in the microbial study in any type of pathogen 
so this type of reaction is very very commonly seen and used in such type of studies even though when suppose you are going to shown the efficacy of arsenic album or the pyrogenum or uh, the thuja cantharis on the cancer cell so you have to uh, focus on the activity done by this dilutions so either they are going to have the catalytic activity on the replication of dna or rna either they are going to promote the replication of dna or rna either they are going to have the proteolytic or apoptotic activity on dna and rna so you have to focus on that particular part so this is very very important why it is very important in our pathi we are a doctor we are a physician why this thing are important for us because there are so many symptoms which are already written in our various textbooks by different stalwarts or the philosophers like uh, in materia medica and in some other textbook that uh, we have the medicine which uh, work on malignancy which work on blood carcinoma which work on the some other carcinoma of uh, human entity so how they are going to act so what are the different conditions how they control the malignancy how they have a potential to prevent the outgrowth of any cellular and tissue structures so this polymerase chain reaction uh, gives you an idea to know about that deeper sense of the pharmacological activity of that particular medicine on that particular cell moving towards next part that is protein purification so what are this generally these are all the events and the chemical reactions which are seen while performing in vitro so you have to know about this just to know the procedure how to do in vitro uh, how we will handle the uh, test tube or the petri dish how this bacteria are going to cultivate these are again important for the procedure part but before going to enter in that particular methodology we have to know about the certain chemical reactions so that we can determine and we can identify and we can categorize that particular medicine on that particular groups either the arsenic or some other medicines are going to have that catalytic activity either uh, the phosphorus and uh, aurum mate or cupromatelic of having that uh, apoptotic activity or proteolysis or the degeneration of the plasma membrane so what type of activities they are going to perform in the cellular and the tissue events so these are very very important protein purification is generally it involves the isolation of a specific protein of interest from a complex structure so often obtained from the homogeneous cell or the tissue so in this purification we are going to isolate that protein which is obtained by uh, that particular cell or the tissue suppose when we talk about the viruses suppose when we talk about uh, any type of pathogen so the protein part is very very important in that particular micro or pathogen this protein makes the genetic structures and the whole action of that particular micro the protein is the major part when we isolate this protein then you have to cultivate you have to grow this protein and then you have to make the uh, separate arrangement and the different colonies with the respective medicines or the selected medicines over that particular protein so this is the isolation part we have to uh, make the isolation of this particular structure because protein part uh, gives you uh, the multiple memories of that particular micro uh, their actions and uh, their sphere where it is going to act so this structure is going to isolate 
and then they are going to make in a different mixture and then they are going to introduce in a any living body for the various changes and for the pharmacological action so it is very very important part next is the in vitro fertilization uh, it is very very important generally it is seen in the, the cases of the infertility in cases of instability or some other cases which is regarding with the this uh, physiological part so generally in vitro fertilization generally it is the fertilization of egg implantation of egg in the another culture media implanted over that particular embryo or the embryonic structure in the uterus of that particular or respective mother so this is in vitro fertilization so here you are going to make the union of this two different cell like a cell of sperm and the ovum they are going to collected or isolated on a particular media that media is going to support this two different cell to grow and to make the implantation when they grow then this uh, zygote this cell this modified part is going to introduce in the uterus of that particular woman body so this is the fertilization here you are going to fertilize outside the body after fertilization you have to implant this cell in the woman uterus or the womb similarly it is also seen in the agricultural sciences where you are going to have the cell of one plant species b that is the cell of another plant species you are going to make it a union and to modify this cell under this particular temperature under this particular cell culture under this particular culture media under this particular time interval afterward you have to take this modified cell in the another species that will give you the hybridization hybrid this is the a different variety in uh, medicine we can say the synergistic effect so this is the hybrid effect the union the new something new effect of the a cell and the b cell when they are going to mix and when they are going to implant when they are going to modify so somewhere the properties of this cell and the property of this cell are going to mix and they have some synergistic effect when they have a synergistic effect they will convert into some modified cell when they are going to modify cell then this cell should be implanted in that particular species when they are going to implanted in that particular species so they will develop a certain plant or certain species when this is going to use in the field of we are talking about the agricultural sciences so when they are going to implant it in that in that manner so this method is the in vitro because it is outside the body it is outside that particular media we are going to provide that particular uh, this is an artificial so we are going to provide that artificial media uh, to uh, through this they are going to have the union they are going to act they are going to mix they are going to have uh, the separate arrangement then they are going to have the different structure so this is in agricultural sciences third category that is animal husbandry in animal husbandry now you can see suppose if a cow and buffalo if some species they are not able to have a very good quality of milk and the excessive milk a decrease any scanty milk production because of some pathological condition and some other genetic uh, impression what we can do so we have to take the cell of that particular species of cow and the buffalo which have the very good milk production then we have to take the cell and the tissue of that particular species then we have to make the modulation we have to develop it and make it uh, as a culture under the culture media and then this a uh, cell and the tissue and that uh, living entity that part is going to inter introduce in that particular animal so they have a more milk production they have a more secretion the scanty secretion gets convert into the profuse secretion so this is animal husband where is homeopathy yes homeopathy exist everywhere 
this culture media uh, the growth and the changes while this uh, union and the modulation you can uh, implant and you can have the inclusion of certain medicines uh, can you think about the culture media prepared by the homeopathic medicine it may be a one of the good research work when you prepare a culture media by the homeopathic medicines either they are ultra high dilution or the tincture it is secondary part so you may have that type of inclusivity in the fertilization so this is an scope this is homeopathy we always uh, have a very stereo mentality we we are focusing on a very single part a very single uh, matter we never thought that uh, homeopathy have this dimension homeopathy have this dimension homeopathy have this dimension homeopathy work on that homeopathy work on that homeopathy have that effect to always have a very fixed vision but please my dear friends uh, homeopathy is uh, just like a seed we have to change the scenario homeopathy exists in everywhere it is very beautiful science the important message is we have to use this science along with the modern experimentation when we mix and have the union of this homeopathy with the modern experimentation then it is said to be the tbm evidence based medicine it is not a pharmacy part it is not a allopathy part it is not a very something different from homeopathy no my dear friends it is uh, our part we have to change the visibility and the intellectual of ourselves so that we can accept and we can do that so it is one of the experimentation in vitro diagnosis what it is it refers a wide range of medical and veterinary laboratory tests which are used to diagnose a certain pathological conditions and they are also going to monitor the clinical status of a patient using a samples of blood cell and other tissues now what we can do uh, this type of in vitro studies are used for the diagnostic purpose suppose if uh, your patient having typhoid or uh, infection of salmonella typhi and some other bacteria or maybe staphylococci streptococci there are n number of microbes so when you have the sample collection from that particular individual and when we go for their cultural sensitivity test so this is also a part of in vitro study so here you have the sample of patient either it is blood serum sputum urine stool etc so these samples are to be cultivated in that particular media under certain temperature and the pressure and a media then after their cultivation they are going to be identified and tested by a various medicines and the microbes so these are in general identification and the diagnosis so it is for the diagnostic and for the medical and this type of laboratory test purpose so it is in vitro diagnosis it is generally when we use this uh, for the pathological uh, nomenclature investigations so these are generally for that purpose so again it is very very important part even though uh, uh inclusivity of homeopathy in this particular diagnostic is very important suppose if you prescribe arsenic album or, or uh, pyrogenum or uh, thuja natrum mur natrum sulfur any type of bacterial or the pyogenic infection so you should be aware about the culture and sensitivity test if you would or included such investigations or test before treatment after treatment so you can justify at what degree of intensity or the sensitivity our medicines are going to act so these are to be evaluated 
these are to be evaluated or repertorized these are to be categorized so it is very very important research work i am just giving you an example where is the homeopathy because ultimately after finishing this uh, powerpoint presentation most of them thought that uh, or they may have like uh, uh, we are a homeopathic doctor we are always uh, prescribing medicine on the symptomatology on the repertorization so where is the need of this test and the experimentation no my dear friends this test and experimentations uh, they are very very important they are why they are important because it gives you an uh, important conflict and very important message or the scientific explanation or the justification for each and every medicine on the basis of their pharmacological activity so it is very very important part next one is this is in vitro diagnosis next is the very important that is in vitro testing so this in vitro testing it is generally used to categorize the specific absorption distribution metabolism excretion of the drug or any chemical body or the chemical entity inside a living organism so what happen when we prescribe any drug any medicinal substances to any individual for any disease condition at certain time interval so what we are going to do we are going to take the sample of that particular chemical or the micro through which we have to categorize or identify the rate of absorption the rate of distribution the rate of metabolism the rate of excretion of that particular drug in that living organism so this type of experimentation are going to identify this absorption of compound in the any living body any living part or any gut or the tract suppose there is a example of gastrointestinal tract so this tract it is going to have that particular long pathway for the absorption of our drug material in the small intestine there is a villi and the finger like projection which increase the surface area or the tension so generally this part is going to study under the microbial or the cell culture so this compound between the organs they are determined to study the distribution mechanism suspension or plate culture of primary hepatocytes generally hepatocytes these are the liver cells so what we can do first we have to isolate and identify that particular cell through which we are going to study and have the efficacy and that isolated cell should be cultivated and after cultivation you have to divide and make the different groups and the categorization of these cells after their categorization now you have to identify this the rate of their chemical structure their chemical variations and their distribution so they are to be used to study and quantify the basic metabolism so these are in general process and these are generally used to have the physiological and pharmacokinetic models so these are pbpk physiological based pharmacokinetic models so physiology is normal functioning so physiological based pharmacokinetic means pharmacokinetic is the branch of pharmacology which deals with the response of that particular cell against the drug so what we can do when you prescribe any drug to any living entity so you have to take the cell and the tissue of that particular living entity in that culture media in a different cellular or in a different zone afterward you have to make the categorization and you have to identify and you have to identify or determine the rate of the absorption of drug in that particular cell the rate of metabolism in that particular cell the rate of distribution of drug in that particular cell and the rate of excretion in that particular cell 
so this is in vitro testing in the cellular region it is very very important part because ultimately you have to uh, focus on the how much amount of and how much what are the rates of the absorption distribution metabolism excretion of our drug substance ultimately these are the sub headings of pharmacokinetics absorption means to absorb and to capture the drug molecule distribution is it is a distributed of that nano and that molecular structure the biomolecular structure of that particular drug in the living body metabolism generally it is related with the catabolism anabolism these are the different phases of metabolism then excretion it is the removal of that particular drug and that particular part through the living entity so these are a very complex structure and very uh, different type of model which is important and which go is going to have that particular categorization or the characterization not categorization the characterization it is very important part why because you have to identify that how much amount of that particular or how much concentration of that drug is going to absorb is going to distribute it this is scientific explanation but in uh, nano ultra high dilution in nano particles in water memory in epitaxy phenomena in uh, potentization uh, it is very difficult to explain this uh, rate of absorption this rate of distribution this rate of metabolism this rate of excretion because somewhere it is uh, lacking somewhere it is not explainable somewhere we are unable to select the models through which we can explain scientifically or justify that part on scientific background so this is very very important to know because again in homeopathy pharmacodynamic somewhere it is explainable like primary action secondary curative counter but uh, pharmacokinetics somewhere it is uh, lacking and somewhere we are unable to explain it so through such type of models when we use this in animal in humans in plants in some other disease condition then you can develop a scenario and then you have a proper knowledge either the china 30 or the 6x it is going to act on the hepatocytes either they are going to have the toxicity on that particular hepatocytes either they are going to act on that particular gi cells either they are going to have the proliferation or the uh, exploitation or what we can say the growth of that particular squamous cell within the lining of intestine small intestine so you have to justify this this is only only possible when we have the such type of experimentation suppose if you want to show that uh, calendula officinal is is one of the antibacterial and anti fungal anti microbial action so you have to take the sample of squamous epithelium or the columnar epithelium from the gut from the intestine when we have that particular cell line then you have to make the uh, what we can say the isolation of that particular cell in a media at particular at particular temperature and under this you have to grown and make the categorization of that cell afterward you have to implement and have the inclusivity of your medicine with the control group and afterward you have to analyze uh, what are the action either the this squamous and cuboidal cells either they are going to uh, undergoes into the proliferative changes either it undergoes into the degenerative changes either it undergoes into the prophylactic changes so these are the various changes you have to do that type of experiment presentation so you can show that calendula having affinity on that particular cell so this is the scientific explanation you have to develop an aptitude towards a research or a scientific background when you have not that type of attitude and the uh, vision so you are unable to have a 
materialistic or what we can say the scientificity the evidence based so you are just uh, on the way of this uh, symptoms sign repertorization so it is not enough you have to show this you have to show and prove the pharmacological action of that particular drug on that particular cell so that you can have the very betterment and what we can say you, you can have the very good explanation and the justification in your pathway on other hand now this is the advantage what are the advantage in vitro studies permit a specific specific a simpler and more convenient and more detailed analysis it is specific why it is very specific because we are going to select only a particular cell and why it is a very simple because there is no complexity it depends on the researcher mind it depends on the individual mind either you are going to have a complex system either you are going to have a particular culture media or a different type of media either you are going to make a two groups or the three groups or the multiple it is depending on your perception so it is very simpler method you can also develop a simple culture media with a single group okay and it is more convenient because we have so many labs analytical lab microbial lab micro testing so we can do this work in in everywhere in anywhere and it is detail analysis ultimately what we are going to do we are going to study the morphological structure of that particular cell which undergoes in that type of cultivation and that type of modulation so this is a detail analysis here you are also going to quantify and qualify the action of your drug either they are going to decrease the n number of colonies either they are going to have the proliferative action or degenerative action over that particular cell so these are the quantification and the qualification of that particular drug over that particular cell so it is one of the very biggest advantage why we do in vitro why not the some clinical background because most of them what happened uh, even though when i used to teach my uh, pg students so generally they are more clinical and they are more uh, what we can say uh, this type of symptomatology or this type of uh, scenario they are not going to have that type of experimentation they are not somewhere they are uh, lacking in that uh, pre clinical studies so this is a uh, very very important to understand the utility of in vitro in vivo pre clinical study which is also said to be a phase 0 study for any type of new drug development we have to do uh, the experimentation from phase 0 to phase 6 7 8 so this is a in general scenario so in vitro it comes under pre clinical study that is phase 0 study in vivo it is also a study of the drug action over whole living organism so it is also comes under in before clinical so these are all phase 0 study so these are to be needed for the new drug development for drug discovery it is very very important part again simply city again it is why it is very simple because there is a no complex therapy there is no mixture there is no then compounds we are just going to have a molecule a biomolecule a genetic makeup or somewhere the proteinaceous molecule and when we have this structure so they are going to cultivate or isolate in a particular media so it is very very simple specific specificity so generally the species specificity it is regarding with the type of selection of the microbe so it is the specific selection of that particular species so you can also have the categorization or general idea regarding the particular species of microbe generally the convenience and automation generally it is regarding with the uh, yielding 
of that particular screening method through different molecules so you are also going to have the toxicity analysis the pharmacological action of that particular molecule on that particular cell so this is very very important because generally when we do the clinical study before going to that preclinical so somewhere there is a more chances of adr that is adverse drug reaction so generally to prevent that that adverse drug reaction or that toxicity you should have that particular in vitro study also prior this clinical one so you can also determine the concentration level at what concentration the arsenic 30 and the arsenic 200 the arsenic 1 is going to have the apoptotic changes on that particular somatic cell so this is your conclusion this is your result that concentration should be measured in our again this is our limitation in our homeopathic pharmacy when we talk about posology which is a branch of pharmacy which, uh, it deals with the doses dosage criteria so generally again it is lacking in our pathy how much dose we always uh, talk about uh, the susceptibility idiosyncrasy but uh, these are on the dynamic plane when we talk about materialistic because we are also prescribing and using the mother tincture so they are generally a quantitative part and the extract of that particular species of plant so that should be uh, quantified that should be qualified on the field on the parameter of pharmacological action and the toxicity toxicological part so that should be measured how much amount of that particular or that particular uh, mother tincture is going to have the lethal effect or the betterment or the proliferative effect so that should be measured again it is question mark somewhere a patient have 10 to 12 drops in a half cup of lukewarm water some patient will take uh, this mother tincture with uh, uh, 15 to 18 drops in a half cup of water. So this may vary. It should not be vary. There should be the uniformity in the dosage criteria. So this is only to be evaluated by such type of experimentation. Disadvantages. Generally, this uh, in vitro experimentation, it is... Uh, just uh, challenging to extrapolate from the result of in vitro work back to the biological of the intact organism investigator doing in vitro work must be careful to avoid over interpretation of the results generally what happen when we have the selection of that particular cell or the species of microbe or the pathogen so most of the time we are going to uh, have wrong interpretation so somewhere there is a error in the culture media somewhere there may be the error in the group division somewhere the temperature and the pressure is not uh, appropriate as per this type of study so there are multiple error errors or what we can say the bias in that particular uh, uh, growth of the cell so there are a number of things somewhere the selection of culture media for that particular cell cultivation may be false. So there are a number of things. So this type of study generally have the misinterpretation when we have no proper this measurement. So if the measurement is wrong, so we have misinterpretation. If the measurement is correct, if a correct culture media is going to select it for our species or microbe or cell so ultimately it may be the very good for that particular condition okay so this will be the very useful part for us and this will lead to the uh, what we can say the growth of that particular organism and the biological effect so this is the one of the disadvantage again for doing that type of study we have to understand this structure. We have to understand this particular scenario. We have to understand the proper mechanism and the methodology 
which is going to use for such type of experimentation. What are the different culture media? Because there are different culture media, chocolate, uh, blood agar, uh, agar agar. Okay. So according to the selection of micro a species, we have to select a particular culture media. So this is very important part. In this picture, you can see this is just a plate. Here you are going to cultivate a cell through which now this nanoparticles are going to introduce in a rat body. So again, there is a selection of a one species of rat. Whereas in this figure, you have the selection of that particular culture media, that particular plate or that particular cell. So this cell to be cultivated, their nanoparticles should be introduced in the whole living organism. Afterward, you have the scanning and analysis on both the quantitative and the qualitative part. Here you are going to show on the pharmacological action or the physiological variation in that particular living entity. So it is just like uh, uh, what we can say the fertilization of this in vitro into the uh, whole living organism. So it is in general explanation regarding with the animal study. Generally in animal study, we uh, have that type of experimentation. So it is another advantage of this study. Generally the main in vitro and in vivo extrapolation is generally regarding with the transportation or what we can say the reactivity over the entire organism. That is a general what we can say the picture of this experimentation. What we can do generally when we have this type of uh, union and when we fertilize this cell in that particular living body, so generally uh, there may be a chances of some variation inside the body or outside the body. So this may have some other changes and they may also have a different type of interpretation through this interaction. So generally it increases the complexity of in vitro system to reproduce this tissues and the cellular interaction between them or another one using the mathematical modeling to numerical simulate the behavior of the complex system where the in vitro data provide model parameter values are to be a very important aspect. So generally there may be the somewhere interpret wrong and the false interpretation from this in vitro to in vivo because in vitro is the cell cultivation outside the body in vivo is the whole living organism study so when we have that cultivation or the fertilization or the implant implantation from this in vitro to in vivo so there may be a some variation or the modulation so they may also have the misinterpretation or some other uh, changes so these are in general references what are the other methods and what are the other sources for this type of experimentation through this source you can have a proper data collection regarding this experimentation so it is very very important part so this is just a very superficial explanation and justification of this experimentation uh, what is in vitro what are the different reaction and what are the the different modulation and uh, how this in vitro may be linked with the in vivo modeling and what are the advantages we part it is not in detail structure but before going to detail structure we have to know about this so this is the phase first phase before entering into the methodology so when we know about this structure then we will go for the detail structure and the step by step procedure how we will perform the in vitro, what are the different criteria, how we will cultivate the cell. So this is very, very important part. And again, in homeopathy, when we do the experimentation with this type of uh, methodology, so you can develop a proper justification of our pathy on the evidence-based medicine. Thank you so much. And thank you, Dr. Suresh Singh Bhagadiya. It's really a very good session once again. Uh, you have proved the beauty of uh, research work and how to uh, the research work need to be looked into the, in different aspects of, of uh, research. Anyway, 
Uh, it's a time for discussion. I invite uh, Dr. Shaji Kudia uh, to begin the session. Dr. Shaji Kudia, please. Un yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you, Dr. Suraj Singh Badoria for this session. It is a very interesting discussion. That's why I I, I thought of uh, attending this session. But unfortunately, I ended a little later. I apologize for that. But I really wish to bring to your attention and seek um, uh, opinions of uh, all others also in this uh, kind of uh, research we are uh, uh, conducting around the world when in vitro and in vivo studies we are conducting in the laboratory, whereas our system of medicine is involved with the holistic uh, science and holistic systems of medicine, where our drug interaction is involving not only in the physical plane, but also under the influence of the dynamic components that constitute the life. So when we conduct a in vitro study, such influences are totally missing. And that is one of the reasons why I consider the allopathic system as an inferior system, even though they are uh, pretending or uh, able to achieve the top position now because of various reasons which I am not going to discuss here. So young generation like you people should understand that and uh, nothing wrong in experimenting or including or uh, incorporating such studies to our uh, experiments and research studies also nothing wrong in that. But I appreciate uh, we should also consider the demerits of that and uh, also the advantages of our proving of medicines in a living organism where our proving will be done not only in the uh, physical changes but uh, under the influence of the mind and the vital force influence that has trembled tremendous impact, impact in the proving because our biochemistry will be different when our mind is in the happy, sad or anger state. So such a studies will never be possible when we conduct a research or conduct a drug proving or anything in animal or in vitro studies, in vivo or in vitro studies. So that is the failure I, I understand in the mainstream medicine happening today. So nothing wrong in conducting such studies for academic reasons and also as part of some fundamental research studies, no problem with that. But uh, I also request uh, to limit that to its appropriate place so that the superiority of our drug proving and the holistic science in medical science holistic method in uh, holistic approach in medical science will not be lost even though today it's uh, it is considered not appropriately in the medical science so i wish to get your comments on that doctor uh, sir generally when we think about this uh, sir uh, as per modern pharmacology uh, when we talk about the drug action uh, we have to first uh, identify which biomolecule or which compound from that particular drug entity is going to act and is going to show their action. Second thing, at what concentration that particular drug is going to act? Because in that particular mother tincture also in any type of uh, what we can say the trituration part in ultra high dilution the concentration plays a major role third thing we are not treating a uh, what we can say a non-living organism or any type of matter we are going to deal with the any living entity either they are unicellular or multicellular organism so ultimately when we prescribe any medicine 
at that particular concentration so they have some effect on that particular cellular structure or the tissue or their morphological structure or their some other accessory part so that should be explainable that should be uh, what we can say a uh, justify on the scientific background because that is to be needed we can't say that uh, in vitro it is uh, we have holistic approach we have the totality of symptom uh, so it is the after and it is generally seen in the clinical and what we can say the patient perspective before entering into the clinical part in drug development we have phase 0 study so this phase 0 study is related with this all type of in vitro and in vivo experimentation that should be needed sir because if we are not going to involve that type of experimentation in our home, not only homeopathy in any type of medical sciences so we are unable to explain the action and pharmacological effect of that particular drug at that particular concentration on that particular cell it is very very important dr henneman he was uh, md medicine he know he is a very great experiment person he know the morphology of that particular viscera that particular living entity we don't know we need to have that vision we have to accept this otherwise uh, it is not evidence it is just a totality of symptom repertorization prescribing of medicine where is posology just to talk about the uh, idiosyncrasy and susceptibility it is posology no as per the modern pharmacology you have to explain this structure this is my answer for that particular question anyway time is already over so we can have uh, such a discussion in the later uh, presentations uh, anyway uh, i invite dr shaji kudi to say a word of thanks to the session also okay dr suraj singh badoria you are you are you are a very interesting guy you are interesting young doctor and um, uh, interesting person i listened to formerly also your presentation that's why today i saw your topic i came to listen to you unfortunately i was little late anyway we need to discuss more about this is not a small topic it is a very big large topic it has lot of implications also uh, to be honest to you i am not satisfied with your explanation today but as dr uh, danesh said uh, it is time limit so i respect uh, the the opinion of dr danesh so i am not disappointing you doctor it is all open discussion that we need to grow together i am i have certain opinions in this perspective i wish to share to you so that we together will grow and bring homeopathy to greater heights not to disappoint you and telling this we need to understand different perspectives and uh, make uh, a common platform by which we all will be able to come to a common ground by which we can bring homeopathy to heights that is my intention only not to put you down or uh, discredit you or disappoint you Uh, so i i really appreciate you as a very good intelligent person uh, but uh, uh, we all understand need to understand each other different perspective so so i ca congratulate you for your honesty and uh, intensity in homeopathy and its research activities so we can further discuss i congratulate you for this session please come to our session with the more um, uh activities and presentations and we appreciate you presentation i will be definitely interested to listen to you also because you are one of my, my favorite presenters presenters in our session so please come back and thank you on behalf of uh, iuph and all those who listen here and on my personal behalf i congratulate you and thank you for your this presentation come back again Yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Shaji Kudia and uh, Dr. Suresh Singh Bahadia. And with that, we come to the end of the day, one thousand three hundred and eighty-seven. Yeah. And tomorrow we will have a session from from uh, Dr. Beatrice Dasna, and she will be talking about uh, uh, the Cali Cali Muriatic and the homeopathy.
antibiotic tomorrow onward. So thank you all. And it's over to Dr. Maria Majon to moderate the Malayala session now.